This week's quiz, we talked about, I posted a link for IT Fundamentals, section 2.1 and 2.2. And that section covered, it was talking about input and output device interfaces and peripheral devices. So that's what this week's quiz was on. So IT Fundamentals quiz, sections 2.1, 2.2, input, output device interfaces and peripheral devices. So let's go ahead and get into this Q&A. Which of the following steps is not needed when setting up a Bluetooth connection? Would it be the device must be paired? The Bluetooth must be turned on? Devices must be discoverable or NFC must also be turned on? So which of the following steps is not needed when setting up a Bluetooth connection? Correct answer to this would be NFC or near field communication must be turned on. That is not needed when setting up Bluetooth. You got to set up Bluetooth. You got to make sure the devices are on, they're discoverable, and you got to go about the process of pairing the devices. You know, all you guys should know how to pair devices by now. If you don't, it's uh, pretty self-explanatory. You don't really even have to think about it. So if you connect the USB 3.0 flash drive to a USB 2.0 port, which of the following will happen? Will it be A, an error message will appear indicating the port is not compatible? Will it be B, the file transfer will run at the device speed? Will it be C, the file transfers will run at the port speed? Or you will be prompted to select a transfer rate. So if you connect the USB 3.0 flash drive to a USB 2.0 port, which of the following is going to happen? Your files are going to run at the speed of the port. So just because you have a flash drive that can support faster transfer speeds, if you plug it into a slower port, the speeds that those files transfer are going to go at the speed of the slower port, ladies and gentlemen. You need to connect the display to your laptop so you can extend the desktop. The laptop Laptop has an HDMI port and a VGA port, but the display only has a DVI-D port. So which of the following will solve the problem? Would you connect the DVI to VGA adapter? Would you use only the laptop's built-in display? Would you use a DVI HDMI cable? Would you broadcast the signal wirelessly? You need to connect a display to your laptop so you can extend the desktop. The laptop has an HDMI port and a VGA port, but the display only has a DVI-D port. So which of the following will solve this problem? You will use a DVI to HDMI cable. That's what you would use. So you're trying to transmit digital signals here. So your laptop, where does it say? It has an HDMI port and a VGA port. VGA only transmits analog signals. HDMI transmits digital signals and also DVI. DVI-D in particular transmits digital visual signals as well. So we use a DVI to HDMI cable to get those digital signals on and popping. You are responsible for setting up a new wireless network. Which type of configuration will you be performing on the router? Would it be web base, driver, plug and play, or browse for the device. So you're responsible for setting up a new wireless network. So which type of configuration will you be performing on the router? And we're going to assume the router they're talking about is a Soho router, a small office, home office router, or just the wireless router that's in your house. So how would you set this thing up? It will be a web-based configuration. So basically when you get your little wireless router in your house, and if you're the one setting it up, it's going to ask you to type in an IP address like 192.168.1. something, and then it's going to take you to this web page and it's going to have you log in. And once you log in, you'll be able to get access to the router and you'll be able to go in there and make any type of configuration changes that you want, changing the SSID, changing the password, but just all types of stuff you can do. But it's going to be web-based is where it's going to take you. That's how you actually get into it. A client calls and is wondering why her new Bluetooth mouse does not work. You need to ask if she went through the blank process. Would it be channel bonding, pairing, driver installation, or UVC? So a client calls and she's wondering why her new Bluetooth mouse does not work. You need to ask her if she went through the pairing process. Did she pair these devices? Now, I know some of y'all are thinking, well, this is a silly question. Everybody should know how to do this. But here's the reality, ladies and gentlemen. There are a lot of people out there who are not tech savvy. As a matter of fact, the other day when I was at the job, somebody came up to me with their laptop saying that, hey, they can't connect their laptop to the network at the company. And it was like, they was trying to do all this, that, and the third. So I got the laptop. I went into the Wi-Fi settings 
And I just simply typed the password in and it solved the problem. And the person was looking at me like I'm a genius. When all I did was just type the password in. I don't know why they couldn't figure that out. I didn't ask. I didn't clown them. I didn't do anything. But this is the type of stuff that when you guys are out there working in IT, especially if you're working in like a tier one, tier two role where you're actually interacting with customers and customers, this could be people that are directly paying you because of your business, or this could be people that work in other departments. Like you work in the IT department, this person might work in the HR department or the marketing department or whatever the case may be. They're going to come to you with questions that you think are elementary and silly, but to them, they have no idea. Like this person, she legit didn't know, or maybe she typed the password in wrong. I don't know, but she couldn't solve the problem to the point where she had to come to me. And I literally just went in there and just typed the Wi-Fi password in and her computer connected to the network. Truth be told, that's what pays you guys the money to solve the, I know a lot of you guys think you're going to get into IT and you're going to be out there doing a lot of jobs on some secret squirrel stuff. You're going to be in a networking closet with your hoodie on, just click clacking away, trying to solve things, preventing hackers from hacking and doing this and doing that. All the things you might see in a movie. I'm here to tell you 99% of the stuff that you're going to do when you're starting off in tech is going to be fixing simple problems like typing in the password or asking a person, did they pair their Bluetooth devices or plugging in cords and cables that somebody might not have plugged in or they may have accidentally kicked out. That's what your job is going to be like when you're doing a lot of tier one, tier two stuff. Next question. You are connecting your computer to a receiver using HDMI and the audio is still coming from the speakers. The receiver is set correctly. What do you need to do? Would you change the default video source? Would you change the default ISP? Would you change the default audio source? Or would you mute the onboard speakers? You are connecting your computer to a receiver receiver using HDMI and the audio is still coming from the speakers. The receiver is set correctly. What should you do? You should change the default audio source. So you look at a question like this off the jump, two of these answers, you should just automatically throw out because this is an audio question. So we're not dealing with video. So you could throw that one away immediately. This question has nothing to do with your internet service provider. So you can throw that out immediately. Now you're left with two questions. It gives you a 50, 50 shot, change the default audio source or mute the onboard speakers. Well, there's no point necessarily muting the onboard speakers because this thing told you that sound is coming out the speakers, right? Which means there's something that's working. Anyways, you need to go in here and change your default audio source. And the reason I'm pointing this out, because when you guys go take these tests, these certification exams, they're going to ask you questions like this. If you can readily identify what answers have absolutely nothing to do with the question whatsoever, that'll save you a lot of time because you got to remember, you're only going to get about on average, about one minute or so to answer these questions. So if you can immediately look at these answers and be like, this has nothing to do with it. This has nothing to do with it. Now you can narrow your answers down really quick. Then if you don't know the answer, you can make an educated guess and hopefully, you know, you'll have a 50, 50 shot at getting it. But these are just some of the test taking strategies that you're going to have to learn.